Hello, I'm Dustin Kirkland, product manager at Google, and I'm joined here by one of my colleagues, Jeremy Louie, who's going to tell us a little bit about Kubeflow uh, and uh, his talk at KubeCon here this week. What can you tell us about developing applications on Kubeflow? Hi. Um, so what we learned at Google is that if you're building ML systems, you have a complicated distributed system that, that uh, requires a lot of DevOps challenges. So with Kubeflow, we decided to take advantage of containers and Kubernetes to try to build an ML platform that could help solve these challenges. And at KubeCon, what I'll be demoing is an example, an end-to-end -end example of solving those challenges using Kubeflow, um, building an ML product where the product in this case is summarizing GitHub issues. So after deploying Kubeflow, we can access JupyterHub and use JupyterHub to launch a notebook for our initial experimentation and analysis. Here I'm using a custom notebook image that has all the libraries we need for this particular example. And so I just click Spawn to go ahead and spawn that particular notebook. Once Jupyter starts, we can go ahead and navigate um, through the menus to find our particular notebook. And this particular notebook was developed by Hamal Hussein for this particular example. And we can see that it has all the steps needed to develop a model. So first we download some data, then we pre-process the data. Once we're done pre-processing the data, we're going to go ahead and define our model architecture. And we can display the actual model architecture using the notebook. Once we're done developing the model, we can actually train the model. And you can see it's running for a couple of iterations. Once we're done training the model, we can generate some predictions in the notebook. Um, and this is great, but we only used a subset of the data. So now we're going to go ahead and train the model at scale using distributed training. But first, to do that, we have to take the code and put it into a Python file. Um, we can then use the Python file to build the Docker image. So this is the Python file with all of the code, which is basically just copied directly from the notebook image. We can then go to the command line, and we can deploy a custom uh, TensorFlow job, which is a custom resource in Kubernetes that we created to make it easy to run distributed training. So we've gone ahead and deployed that job, and now we can look at the actual spec for that job. And basically, it's a bunch of pod template specs, where one pod template spec describes each replica in our distributed training job. Um, while the job is training, we can go ahead and launch TensorBoard and use TensorBoard to see how well our model is training and what the performance is. Once we're done uh, training the model, we can take advantage of Selden to uh, deploy the model. And to use Selden, all we have to do is implement the predict function. We can then build a Docker image with our model. We can then deploy it using uh, Selden's custom resource. So here we're just launching the uh, a Selden deployment for our particular model. After we've deployed it, we can go ahead and see what the spec is. And we can see that this spec is very similar to a deployment spec. The main difference is we can specify an inference graph that consists of the models. And once we're done with the models, we can go ahead and check out our actual web application to, to generate predictions. Summarizing GitHub issues. So you take as input, your data input is uh, I guess a, a, a GitHub project, and you're going to build a summary of all of the issues in that project? Um, actually, we summarize individual issues. So um, one of the problems if you're maintaining a GitHub project is uh, a lot of times people file issues with uninformative titles, in a large part because maybe they're following a bug report and they don't know what the actual problem is. So uh, if you're after you do a little bit of triaging and you find out what the actual uh, problem is, you want to go back and give the issue a more informative title um, to maintain the hygiene of your project. Um, but that requires a lot of toil and manual labor. So this is something that you might want to automate uh, by building using ML to see if you can automatically generate a title from an issue. So as that issue gets updated, as people can, um, provide comments and feedback on the issue, you can automatically generate a title that better summarizes that issue. Will this help with dedupe, perhaps? Maybe deduping different issues in, in GitHub and helping developers spend more time on the issues that matter? Um, it, could, it could be extended, potentially, to uh, solve that problem. Because one of the things you, you learn you, uh, with, with this particular application, you can actually learn embeddings of, uh, uh, of GitHub issues. And those can become features for other models. And one of those models could potentially be to identify du uh, duplicate issues. Right. Is this something that we're going to use, actually, at, uh, at Google, perhaps, ourselves? 
Um, right now, it's, it's, a, it's an exploratory product, so it's actually developed by um, Hamal Hussein, who's a data scientist at um, GitHub. Um, and so we took that and we started to try to productionize it on, using uh, uh, Kubeflow. And what are the, some of the technologies that this is built on top of? I assume at least Kubernetes, maybe TensorFlow, right? Uh, anything else fit into the, the sort of the framework? Yeah, so there's a lot of different packages that we incorporate to build this uh, product. So we start off by deploying Jupyter Hub, which is a multi-user uh, Jupyter notebook solution. And we, and we use that to give our data scientists um, the ability to explore, explore data and, and build their models. Um, once they're, and usually they're using TensorFlow for that. Um, when they're done doing that, then they sort of want to train at scale. In this case, you know, using distributed TensorFlow running on Kubernetes. Um, they then have to build and deploy a model. In this case, they're using Selden IO. Um, and then after they deploy that model, they also have to deploy a simple web application to actually make those, uh, make it more consumable. So how hard is this to set up for an end user who has a, uh, who has a, a GitHub repo? Um, so this is to set up Kubeflow. It's just a couple commands, and um, we provide all the source on uh, in our examples repo. So anybody should be able to try to set it up and start serving a model. So five minutes to wow. Sure. <laughs> Great. Thanks, Jeremy. Thank you.